There's a long-standing tradition for Jewish parents to bless their children every Friday night at the beginning of the Shabbos meal. We bless our daughters that God should make them like the matriarchs. You'd think that we would bless our sons similarly, that God should make them like the patriarchs. But instead we say, may God make you like Ephraim and Menashe, the two sons of Joseph, Yosef, grandsons of Jacob, Yaakov. Why? Because in this week's Torah portion, when Yaakov himself blessed Ephraim and Menashe, he said to them that through you, the Jewish people will bless, saying, may God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. But why did Yaakov single out those two grandsons over his other ones and over his sons? To answer this, let's go back to last week's Torah portion. Yaakov gets the stunning news that his son Yosef, presumed dead for so many years, is actually very much alive, and he's the ruler of Egypt. Initially, he cannot believe that news, but once he's reassured, his spirit revives and he says, I'm going down to see my son Yosef before I die. Those last few words seem unnecessary. Just say, I'm going down to see my son Yosef. Why before I die? One of the greatest people to live within the last hundred years or so was the Chafetz Chaim, an unbelievably inspirational rabbi and author. Another rabbi used to encourage people to go see the Chafetz Chaim towards the end of his life because they wouldn't get another chance. And this rabbi would explain, once the Chafetz Chaim dies, he's going to go up to heaven and have a special place, so close to God's throne that none of us will have the opportunity to see him there. We won't have that type of VIP or backstage access in heaven. So go see the Chafetz Chaim now while you still have the chance. Yaakov is saying the same thing. I need to get down to Egypt to see my son Yosef before I die. Because once I die, I'll never get the opportunity again. Even in heaven, you mean to tell me that Yosef was down in Egypt for 22 years, the most decadent society in the world, the only Jew in the country, and he didn't just rise to prominence. He became the leader of the entire country and yet remained steadfast in his belief in God and true to his rituals and traditions and values, it's almost impossible to comprehend. When he gets up to heaven, even I, Yaakov, the patriarch, won't be able to see him because of the enormity of what he was able to accomplish through his self-restraint. And so Yaakov singles out the two sons of Yosef, the first two Jews born and raised in exile, and says, through you, the Jews are going to bless their sons because Yosef was able to raise them in exile and pass on to them his nearly superhuman self-restraint, his ability to say no of the prevailing mores and fads and fashions and vices and to remain true to his God, the one God, and his religion. And what an important message for right now when the temptations that our children face are unimaginable, greater than they've ever been before expanding exponentially every day, every minute, when the contest, the fight for their attention and their affections is as intense as it's ever been. And so we bless our children. We bless our daughters that they should be like the matriarchs and our sons that they should be like Ephraim and Menashe, possessed of that inner strength, that moral fiber, that self-restraint to be able to say no to the evil inclination, to stay focused and committed to our values to our traditions, to our rituals, and to our beliefs. Mm -hmm.